What's going on everybody? It's your favorite on Timo and we are back for another episode review of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. This is season six, episode eight, Oh Mama. And it was a whole lot of mama going on in this episode. <laughs> Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And then hit that notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, this episode was, I ain't gonna lie. It kind of got me emotional just a little bit because the episode was a lot about the mamas. And you know, my mama's gone. My mama's been gone since 07. Rest in peace, Diva Net. I miss you, girl. So it just made me miss my mom. It made me cherish the relationship that I have with my mom. And it just made me miss everything about my mama. So to everybody out there who still has your mama's love on them, go give them a hug and a kiss from your Auntie Mo. And if you've lost your mama and you're grieving and, and you're hurting like I am, Auntie got you, boo. Mm. They go a hug. Just for you. I love you, boo. I love you. It ain't nothing you can do about it, like my pastor would say. <laughs> but hopefully y'all are ready for the review, because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all. First things first, I got my water on the rocks. Y'all already know that I've been telling y'all for the past couple of videos that I have not been feeling the best. And today was one of those days that I was just feeling sick to my I've been dealing with these migraines and dizzy spells I hope I ain't got no damn brain aneurysm or nothing like that and I ain't like even joking when I say that I'm for real because my nana had an aneurysm I don't need that in my life anybody got time for that I got a seven-year-old and I got a husband I ain't got time for no brain aneurysms in my life but I got my water on the rocks I was gonna lie and tell y'all it was gin but I ain't no goddamn G like that I'm not gangster to drink no damn clear liquor. This is H2O on the rocks, baby. <laughs> but anyways, y'all, so we got to start off where it left off last time. K. Michelle is meeting with Tone, her surrogate. She wants to go over some concerns that she has about this whole, you know, surrogacy thing with her going on YouTube and making a video, letting the whole world know that she's going to be K. Michelle's surrogate. Now, K. Michelle wants her to know, look here. I need you to understand that this is a business. I'm paying you. I don't need you calling me every day. We don't need to be shooting shit, whoop de woo being homegirls, all of that. I don't care about what you're cooking later on. I don't care how work was for the day. You know what I'm saying? This is a business. I'm paying you. I don't want you to get emotionally involved in this when that's not where I'm at with it. And Tone completely understood it. They made it seem all dramatic when the episode ended last week that it was like they finna get into it and, and knuckle and all of that. Tone was like, okay. I don't, I'm, you don't want me to call you every day. That's fine. All right, what else you need? Kay's telling her, look here. I'm going to need you to let your baby daddy know as well. This whole issue, he coming at me with a contract ain't going to happen. He ain't even your husband. He needs to realize that I'm doing a job with you. You know what I'm saying? It'd be different if he's your husband. He's involved in this in other ways, but he's not. It ain't his sperm. It ain't none of that. You just holding the womb for me. You know what I'm saying? You holding the house for my baby. He ain't got nothing to do with that. And so again, Tony was like, all right, that's fine. I can let him know. It's not a problem. I was glad it went good because I would hate for K. Michelle to get into it with somebody else because we all know K. Michelle good for getting into it with goddamn people. But her, K's whole thing is she wants the perfect surrogate, as she says. She wants that person to be as close to perfect as possible. Baby, Michelle Obama ain't giving up her womb, and we all know Oprah don't want no damn kids, so you might as well go ahead and go to Tony. I'm perfect too, but I ain't finna lend you my wound. I just play. <laughs> but for real though, girl, bye. Go ahead and get that girl Tone your eggs and shit so she can have that baby from you. Y'all, K. Michelle is something else. Y'all, let's go ahead and get K. Michelle out the way. So later on, she goes and meets with, I think his name is Christian Bush. He's a country music singer. He, you know, she's meeting with him because we all know K. wants to now get into singing country music. They're at this restaurant talking. He pulls out this guitar, and they kind of start, like, freestyling a country song. K. Michelle is batshit crazy, but her voice is beautiful. That is one thing you cannot deny K. Michelle. She has a gorgeous voice. And when he was playing that guitar, he was kind of, you know, singing, trying to make up something. She was harmonizing with him. It was really beautiful. He's telling her, you know what I'm saying? How about you go on Grand Ole Opry and uh, see what's popping? Y'all know the Grand Ole Opry is like the white folks 
Showtime at the Apollo. Now, you know how it is at the Apollo. If you can make it at the Apollo, you can make it there. You can make it anywhere. So he's telling her, go on the Grand Ole Opry because she's worried about getting, like, criticism and backlash and any racism that she may face from the country music world because... You know, that's completely different. She's used to R&B, but now you singing, my dog got hit on the Sunday while I'm drinking my beer. You know, it's something totally different. She's afraid of being rejected. So he's telling her, how about you go on Grand Ole Opry, get up there and sing something, see what you, you know, the response that you get from the crowd. So we're going to see what's going to happen from that. Okay, Michelle, listen. I think she just needs to stick with R&B. That's just me. I could be totally wrong. She could get in there and freak the hell out of it. But girl, you see how they did Lil Nas X. I'm just saying, stick with what you're good at, boo. So April is still in Chicago. She goes over to her parents' house because that's where she's going to stay while she's there, right? Her and her mother, she was saying that her and her mom were able to mend their relationship when she first got on Love & Hip Hop Hollywood, if you remember. She was pregnant with either with either Mega or Amay. She was pregnant with one of them damn babies. I don't know. But she was pregnant with one of them, and her and her mother did not have a good relationship. Now, April says that she lived with her mother up until she was five. After she was five, she went and lived with her grandmother. When, her, when she turned 11, her mother came back and then tried to get her. So that caused her and her mother to have a real rocky relationship growing up. She said she was a wild teen. She was real bad. She used to steal her mama car. Do all kind of crazy shit. But now they're in a completely different space and they're able to love on each other and appreciate each other. It was a real cute mother-daughter moment, right? She gets into the whole thing once again, talking about how Drew was her best friend and how he's her savior and how he was there for her to pick her up out of the muck and the murky, all that shit, when she was down and out. Mama started crying because, you know, she said when she got down to 100 pounds, how, 100 pounds, how she was so worried about April, how when O left her, her mom was traveling back and forth from Chicago to LA to help her with the kids. Question, time out. Why y'all think O left April? Because she swears up and down, he just came home one day and just decided he didn't want nothing to do with the relationship no more, right? Now, word on the streets from the people that like to pee. I had heard that she was always the go-between person between Omarion and Fizz, right? And so, when her and Omarion was together, she was always, like, real cool with Fizz. And so, speculation out there is that maybe she got a little bit too, too close with Fizz and maybe something had happened. And so, O came home and was like, oh, no, bitch, you want to bump, bump, bump with my uh bandmate? I'm finna chunk you the deuce. I don't know if that's really what happened. Like I said, word on the curb from the peeps that like to talk shit and stuff. That's what I had heard. You know what I'm saying? But once again, she with this whole thing about that's her best friend. I'm sick of them. I just wish they would just come out with the truth. Now, stop playing with my damn emotions. We know y'all back there bump, bump, bumping when the cameras ain't around, but you're steady playing with us. You joking with us in our face. You're playing off my intelligence, and I don't like it. And that's what gets on my nerves. And that's what irritates me about April and Fizz's ass. But Fizz so damn, he high. He ain't never here. He high right now some damn weird. He don't pay attention to nothing that's going on. But y'all, and then another thing that irritates me about Fizz, and again, because you know, I like to give you my unsolicited <laughs> commentary and advice. Anyway, he don't even treat Monice with all this utmost respect and all this that he's showing to April like, damn, you can't get it to your baby mom. But you know what? That ain't none of my business. I'm finna sit up here and drink my water on the rocks. Brittany B goes to visit Apple Watch. <laughs> Apple Watch. <laughs> you know, Apple got some new apples. So, Brittany B goes over there to visit her to check on her, see how she's doing. Apparently, Apple had posted something on social media about how her, um, she's in a lot of pain. Whoop de whoop, yada, yada, yada. Brittany's there to check on her, right? Now, um, Apple was saying how, you know, not only does she want to change herself from the outside, she wants to work on herself from the inside as well. She said that her mother and her sister reached out to her once they seen that post that she had put on social media. Now, she's saying that her and her sister are cool, but her and her mom are not. She said she ain't talked to her mama in a year since she kicked her mother out of her house a year ago. Now, 
again, watching this episode made me love and appreciate everything that my mother has taught me and has instilled in me and the relationship that me and my mama had. Me and my mother talked on the phone every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. I talked to my mother every day so to then to just have it like not be there oh see y'all it's getting me hold on bring it back bring it back bring it back it was i was kind of whoo i was kind of slipping off that anyways she was saying how you know she hadn't talked to her mother in a while and so she's gonna be okay with you know hopefully mending whatever relationship she can with her and her mother. Now, Brittany B was saying that she understands as well. She said she hadn't talked to her mother in five years. She said her dad passed away when she was eight years old. After that, her mother got addicted to drugs and alcohol real bad. And so she had just been in and out of her life. Brittany says that caused her to be a wild teen, out wilding out, doing all kind of crazy mess, right? So somehow or another, Lear, I want to say it was damn Brittany B. No, Apple Watch brought up Lyrica because she said she hadn't seen Britney B since the whole showcase that happened. She asked what happened. And so Britney B was saying basically how she, if the opportunity presents itself, how she wants to apologize to Lyrica and hopefully make things right and cool with her. I don't trust that damn Britney B. She seems like a typical hating ass female. Like she didn't seem to have no real legit reason why she didn't like Lyrica other than the fact she heard that the girl had something to say about her. But Lyrica told her, I don't have no problem with you. I never said I had a problem with you. But she still is insistent that Lyrica got a problem. Girl, it's just dumb to me. It was real, real, real dumb to me. But moving on from the ass. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. I don't know if I mentioned it now, but Apple was saying how she's got her own demons that she's dealing with. She's dealing with alcoholism that she wants to hopefully not end up like her mama because she said she's tr trying to fight so hard not to be like her mama but she started drinking more and more and she's starting to notice that she's starting to turn into her mama so she's trying to turn her life around and that's another reason why she wants to try to hopefully mend some things with her mother so she can get a better relationship with her that's what i want to tell you later on we see apple watch's mama and her sister end up coming to the house to visit her and when she you could say First of all, Apple looks just like her mama. And her mama is just as hard as Apple is. It wasn't no sentimental hugging. Oh, I love you. I miss you. None of that. Apple's like, what's up? I ain't seen you in a long time. Where you at? You out in Vegas at Granny House? Her mom's like, yeah, I'm at Granny House. She's like, mm-hmm, how, how, how Granny doing? She don't ever call me or nothing. Her sister, her sister name is Dominique. Her sister was like, she don't call me neither. You know, we like the black sheep of the family. Her mom is like, well, she doesn't have your number. She don't have no way to get in contact with you. After this, like, girl, please. Girl, please. Stop lying. She can get in contact with me if she wanted to. But, y'all, it was just cute to see, like, her mother apologized to her for not being there. She says that she wants to work on their relationship. Hopefully, they can get at a better place. Apple is like, well, you know I ain't sentimental. I ain't emotional and all that. But, yeah, I'm down with working on our relationship, all this, that, and the other. Just then, Apple's mama started to cry because it was emotional. But, again, Apple the hardest pit in the litter. She ain't been a cry for none of you hoes. This is what it is. Then she got to get, she started getting on her mom like, damn, this motherfucker up here crying like, damn, nigga, hard enough. Say it with your chest. It was real funny. Baby, next thing you know, her sister gonna pull out the charger. Y'all, let me charge up my leg real quick to charge up her damn ankle monitor. Girl, the sister got on the damn ankle brace. The sister is a felon. Mama's a former felon. I know Apple done been in jail too. I don't know if she's a misdemeanor or a felon. Either way it go, they all some criminals up in here. But the way she pulled out that damn charge, she pulled it out like she was charging the damn iPhone. I said, what? In the orange is the new black is going on here. Big Lyric and G performing, baby. <laughs> she got on an all white suit with her steel looking diaper booty, looking all godly, singing her song, talk, 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 something like that. I don't know what the hell they were saying. Lyric is that Lyrica's outfit was cute. She had on like this beige bodysuit with the hat. That hat and that red lipstick, baby, was setting that outfit off. Both the lyrical, little lyrical, big lyrical, both of them look good. I got to give them to them, right? So they there, they just having a good time because like I said, big lyrical G performing with her little diaper booty singing her new little song. Next thing you know, Britney B is there. Britney B comes out and like she walks up on them and both the lyrical's looking like, what the hell is you doing here? Lyrical even asks her, bitch, what the hell is you doing here? 
Britney B reaches out like, oh, I just want to give you a hug. Like, I just wanted to check on you, see how you doing. Side note, though, before she said that, she gonna say in her green screen. Now, see, Lyrica G, she can sing. I don't know why she didn't pass none of that DNA down to her daughter. Bitch, she did. Have you heard Lyrica Anderson sing? That girl can sing her ass off. She can sing Oh, 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 O'Reilly's, and that will be banging. That girl can sing. Britney B was just hating. That's why I don't, I don't too much care for her big Amazon ass, because she just... She don't got nothing positive to say. Since she been on here, since episode one of her being on here, it's just been her saying negative things about other people on there. She ain't said nothing to uplift nobody else, girl. She's a damn trip. But anyway, she bends over like she gives Lyrica a hug. Lyrica kind of like side hugs her. The whole time, big Lyrica, Lyrica G sitting up there side eyeing her ass is like, bitch, I'm watching you. With my good eye. Because you know she kind of got her eyes be like this sometimes. She like, no, bitch, I'm watching you with this goddamn eye. I don't trust your ass. I don't blame you, Big Lyrica. I was right there with her. So she is, you know, she introduces her to her mother. But again, this is Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, child. We already knew she knew who the hell she was. Brittany B then says, like I said, she said she wanted to check on her. Then she brings up the whole situation with A1 and Summer Bunny. Lyrica's like, look here, girl. We ain't here to talk about that. How you doing? What's going on with you? As they talking, girl, here come big sack of laundry, Mama Pam. She come walking up, bitch, in her best fashion over two-piece army fatigue, ready to TTG if she got to, baby. She came in there like she was ready for wall. <laughs> Mama Pam, Mama Pam, built like a thick-ass sack of nickels, girl. You better go on out here with them damn two-piece shawl. I ain't mad at you. With the pants right up here. <laughs> Anyways, so she came over there. She came and she sat down and Lyrica G looking at her like, girl, what is you doing here? The hell? Mama Pam sits down like, hey, girl, what's going on, girl? Lyrica said, what's going on, girl? Last time I seen you, you said, the hell with you, Lyrica G. I said, the hell with you. She was like, look here. Me and you got it coming. We got a beautiful ass grandson. So we need to be on the same page, me and you. We need to get along, if for nothing else, for the sake of our grandson. Lyrica G was with it. She like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, if you say so. So they hug it out. Then Mama Pam takes... Big Lyrica G over to the bar. They over there finna drink and tie up. I'm like, oh, so y'all cool now? I mean, I, I guess it is what it is. So then Brittany, Brittany B and Lyrica still there talking, right? Once again, they start talking about damn Summer Bunny. Brittany B asked, why was Zell on IG Live with her? Just as they're talking about Zells, Zells ends up walking up. He's like, oh. Hey, girl, I just wanted to come and set the record straight. You know, it ain't what you think, yada, 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 right? Now, as Zell sits down, first thing he says to Brittany B is you need to apologize to me for what you said to my friend. Now, Zell's, you should have just stayed out of that, okay? You said what you had to say to her that night at the bowling alley. You should have just left that shit right there because she wasn't actually coming at you. She was coming at Paris, but I get it. You want to stick up for your home, girl. Whoop de whoop, yada yada yada. But at that particular moment, you could have just left that damn girl alone, ignored her big ass, and not have said a damn thing to her. But you wanted to be petty, you wanted to get something started. So she asked Zell's, like, okay, so I see you was on on IG with some of Bunny being messy. She was like, he was like, yeah, I was, and whoever don't like it can suck my mm. Right as Lyrica is right there, Lyrica is the one that got a problem with it. Real weird. So him and Britney B go back and forth. Security ends up escorting Britney B out of there, which I was glad of it because their their argument was just annoying. You see, I ain't getting into too much details about it because their argument was just really, really, really annoying. At that point, Lyrica started talking to Zell. She's like, so why did you end up going on live with this girl? You're supposed to be my friend. Why would you do that? He claims that he wasn't being messy, that somebody wanted him to promote something that was hers. He went on her page for the first time. He just so happened to click on her live. Before he could even really say anything, she ended up clicking on him, and then they started talking, but then that's when Lyrica called. Now... 
I'm 39. I know I'm a bit old school, but don't when you go on live with somebody, you have to request to go on live with them. Like they don't request to go on live with you. I only been on live one time and it was that long. So I don't even know how, really how that go. But I thought that you had to request to be on live with somebody. They just couldn't randomly pick like, boom, you, you're live, call on the air. I didn't think it went like that. But she tells Zell's like, look here, I got a lot of shit going on with me right now. Me and my husband are separating and I don't need you being no sideways ass friend of me. Zell's then starts to tell her y'all ain't separating. She starts crying. Girl, you ain't going to well. Well, shit, child, I was wrong. Lyrica back at the house packing up her stuff. She getting ready to move the hell out. Come to find out some girl sent her a DM saying her friend met A1 on the plane going to Miami and that her friend ended up sleeping with A1. Now, this is my thing. Friend, why is you hitting her up telling her that? Are you really the one that slept with him? Is this something that's made up? Like, why the hell would you... Women is messy. Oh, my girl. Anyways, so she said the girl had been sending her messages about it, but this motherfucker A1 ended up getting into Lyrica's messages and was deleting the damn messages. A1. You know, hey, even OJ tried to cover his damn tracks. I am mad at you trying to do what the hell you got to do. So she's there with her homegirl, Sia, packing up her stuff. You know, she got the baby there, whatever. She got the movers coming, baby. She is playing no games. She's taking the TV, the wash, the dry, the crib, the pots, the pans, the plaques off the wall, the plant. I want my barbells. I want my candles. I want everything. Everything, everything. I want my Glade plug-ins. I want my tissue. I want my Colgate. I want everything. She taking every damn thing. Just then, Big Mama, uh, Big Lyrica G come in all hysterical and shit. What's going on here? She tells Mama Pam, I mean Mama G, what happened? Big Mama uh, G like, well, let's go ahead and get the hell on up out of here. You should have left long ass goddamn time ago. And she leaves. I don't blame you. Like, um, but then Lyrica was saying that she's getting sick and tired of girls steady coming in her DMs telling her about what A1 got going on. Girl. She left that nigga a long time ago. He was doing all like, y'all, so we got April making her rounds to all of her friends while she's still in Chicago before she goes back to L.A., right? Now, of course, we remember she was supposed to be in Chicago to go to the B2K tour or to the B2K concert. We'll get into that in a minute, right? She goes by 9Mag, sees Ryan. This half going to tell Ryan, what, what can I get for a free tattoo? I'll give you some coochie for a free tattoo. I know she was playing. I know she was probably playing. Hopefully, at least I think he was playing. I'm going to say he was playing with him. But still, girl, how shit has been going for you right now, how your rep has been, don't play like that. Don't play like that. Then she goes to the studio to record a song that was whack as hell, April. Girl! Finally, she's at this dinner party. Everybody's there. Fizz is there. Paris is there. What's his name? Willie and his old lady. Willie from day 26 or day 22 or 28 days. Monday through Friday. I don't know. That dude, him and his old lady was there. Her parents were there. Friends and family. Everybody was there at the family dinner, right? So Paris' ass brings up to Fizz. She's like, so how's it been on tour? Like, I'm sure tension is thick in ass cheeks like how y'all doing are y'all okay he says that there has been a lot of t uh, tension he says he got a lot of slack i mean a lot of flack or whatever from him bringing april to the last you know concert or whatever that they had april then tells him because of all the drama that happened the last time she was there she ain't gonna come to this one he said he's upset who really gives a damn and I know it's really wrong to say, but y'all lying in my face anyway. I don't care. I don't take nothing y'all say goddamn serious. Then next thing you know, mama starts to tell Fizz, thank you so much for being there for April. I really do appreciate you being there for her. When um, she was going through her, her old situation with Omarion, you really stepped up. Mama starts crying. April starts crying. Y'all just don't understand. He is my savior. He is Fizz's Christ. He has been there for me. Girl, stop. It just gets on my damn nerves. Y'all in Paris, messy ass. Let's toast to Fizz in April. I'm team 
Fizz and April to the bride and groom. <laughs> I was like, Paris, you little big head Bessie bitch. She rolled for that. <laughs> Y'all, A1 done brought his ass home looking like a broke dick dog. Don't know what the hell to do. Half the shit gone in the house. He said, I ain't got nothing but a TV and a binky left. She left a pacifier and a TV. Probably with no remote. I'd have took the remote to that goddamn TV too. With my petty ass, the remote and the cables. Nigga, now how you gonna watch TV? So he walking around the house looking crazy. This fool gonna call the only person he feels can comfort him. In his time of sorrow right now, he calls Ray J. The hell is Raycon gonna do? Raycon come over there with him and his big dad belly. You know what? I ain't gonna even lie. Ray J looks cute to me now. When he was little skinny Ray J, I really wasn't feeling that. Look here, I'm a chubby chaser. I love my men thick. The thicker the better. That's just me though. That's my little personal preference and a belly. Oh, I like a big nigga with a belly. I'm wrong for that. I'm getting completely off subject. Hmm. My husband is a big nigga with a belly and I love it. Anyways, he calls Ray J. Ray J come over there to the house. Ray J. <laughs> I can't take nothing Ray J ass say serious because everything he says has a twinge of messy pettiness to it, right? A1's whole thing is, I've been trying to call Lyric because she ain't answering the phone. I don't know where my son is. Lord, where my baby? I don't know nothing that's going on. Ray J asked, so did you smash her or nah? He like, nah. I don't even know what happened. You're lying. Ray J even said you're lying because you know Ray J, Ray J known for being a hoe. And hoes no hoes. That's why Ray J was like, this nigga lying. I know he messed around with that girl. Next thing you know, they're sitting up there in the house looking like two broke dick dogs. Then he hears a door opening up. It's all dramatic and shit. He like, well, who is that? What? Who's who's gonna come? And then, damn you, VH1. The episode ends from there. Like, damn, you could at least put the camera on. Let me see who it is, so I can be prepared for what the conversation might be based on who the hell it is. But you're just gonna cut it off like that. You know what I'm saying? But you know, it is what it is. Hey, if y'all watched the episode, if it was anything that I missed, please don't forget put it down below. Let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Pray for your auntie because your auntie ain't be feeling good at all. And Auntie Mo, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.